Birthdays can be so hectic, especially when you're running around trying to make a cake at the last minute. But don't worry, this cake can be made quickly and it's also incredibly delicious. This recipe is designed to be simple and perfect for those unexpected celebrations which can catch you off guard or if you forgot someone's birthday. I'll show you how you can make your cake look good without that much effort. And FYI, I didn't use a professional piping bag to get those lovely dollops of cream on the side of the cake. I'll show you how you can do that in this video. So let's get started as you're probably pressed for time. First up, get your oven on so it's nice and hot for your cakes. You need to also line your cake tins with some baking paper so it's ready for your cake batter. To do this quickly, grab some baking paper and draw some circles around your baking tin and then cut it out. And then what I do is just grab my tin and rub butter into it. Use a fair bit of butter to grease your tin to prevent your cakes from sticking to the pan. Grab your cutouts and then you can just slot it inside. Preparing your cake tins first just makes your life so much easier and gets it out of the way so you can concentrate on baking. Next up, grab your weighing scales and get your butter into your bowl. Weigh out your sugar and then get ready to mix them together, otherwise known as creaming. You're going to need a hand mixer. It will just cream your butter and sugar in no time. You can do this by hand but it will take slightly longer. I'm all about time saving gadgets and this only cost 9.99. I put where I got it from in the description box. And this isn't even an ad, this is just a legitimate recommendation. And if you don't have a mixer, I have a video which goes over how to cream together butter and sugar by hand if you want to check that out. I'll link it in the description box and above. Now if you've only mixed your butter and sugar for one minute and it looks like this, don't do that. So many people make this mistake and just stop here. You want to keep going, you want to keep on beating this mixture until it's light and fluffy. As you can see here, it's really light, fluffy and pale in colour. You know it's ready when it looks like this. And also don't forget to scrape down the side. Once that's done, crack in your eggs one by one and you can use a mixer or wooden spoon to mix it. You want to really mix in those eggs as you're introducing air to the batter, which will only make your cake nice and fluffy. So you want to get a sift, your self some flour and your weighing scales again. Put it underneath and weigh out your flour and sift it in. Sifting in your flour will remove any lumps and again, will introduce air to that batter. Adding your baking powder, which is so important as it gives your cake that lovely rise and then carefully fold it in. Add in some milk to loosen it up as it does get quite thick at this point and your batter is now ready for the oven. Grab your prepped cake tins and then add your batter to it. As a simple trick to make sure that your cakes come out looking good and equal in size, weigh your cake tins to make sure you have an equal amount of batter in each one before putting in the oven. Do not open that oven door. You need to leave it in there because if you open that oven door, it will just dome and the middle part will sink. You need to leave it in there for X amount of time and just don't open that door. If you wanna check on it, just look on it through the glass. Trust me on this because I've done that so many times and been so disappointed when the cake is all horrible and domed. When your cakes are ready, get them out of the oven and don't remove them from the cake tins just yet. These are hot from the oven. You're gonna leave these to cool. You want to leave the cakes in the pans until they're cool to touch. As if you turn them out too early, they may break. Turn the cake tins upside down and give it a good thwack to get your cakes out. It is always so satisfying to peel back that baking parchment. Just look at that. Another easy way to make your cakes look extra good is to assemble your cakes on a clean wooden chopping board. I think it just makes it look really rustic. Get your strawberry jam into a bowl so you can smush it up and make it quite loose so you can spread it on your cake. This is a matter of preference, but if you want your double cream to only show through the cake, leave a border when you're spreading over the jam so that it doesn't overflow. To make your cream filling, all you need is double cream, a little bit of ice and sugar, and give it a good mix. The double cream will really thicken up, but don't mix it too much, otherwise it'll curdle and look like this. To get those nice cream dollops around your cake, grab a Ziploc bag and then cut off one end. Grab a tall glass and then get your Ziploc bag and put it into the glass with the cut off end pointing downwards. Once that's done, fill up your makeshift piping bag with your double cream and then pipe it onto your cake. I'm based in Spain and the double cream here is really watery so excuse the watery mess. Gently squeeze out your double cream onto the border which you've left around your cake and it will come together, trust me 
it will look ghastly but when you put your cake on top it will just come together sifting on ice and sugar is another way to elevate your cake really easily and topping your cake with strawberries blueberries again will just make it look amazing adding some of that fruit to your chopping board is a really easy way to make your cake look so good without putting that much effort this cake looks stunning and it's so easy to rustle up but if i can tempt you have a look at my other videos which also feature more easy bakes